The MSBSK Assault Rifle, the Vityaz SMG, and the UKM Light Machine Gun are the first three weapons every player gets their hands on in World War III. They are the first three unlocks in their respective classes, and also the primary weapons in the first three default loadouts. Given how early and how easily you can acquire them, a lot of people might automatically think that they must be some of the worst performing weapons in the game as gaming in general teaches us that the best items are usually not available at the very start. That may not be the case here, because the MSBSK, Vityaz, and UKM are all amazing. They're not specialized, but they are very versatile. And by versatile, I'm not saying that they're downright average at everything, because they're actually really good at a lot of things. They're not the best at any one thing, but they perform way above average at a lot of things at once. And for that reason, it's actually at least possible to argue that any one of them is the overall best gun in their class especially the UKM, although that is not what I'm doing right now. In this video, I simply want to go through why these three guns are at least great, and what attachments I recommend putting on them to really maximize their potential. Starting with the MSBSK, this is an assault rifle and it fires 5.56 rounds. Something to know about ammo in World War III is that weapons using the same ammo type have the exact same damage profile. Now, the chart you're seeing on screen is probably obsolete. I'm putting it on the screen just to show you what I mean by damage profile, if you don't already know. It's the amount of damage the bullet does and how it changes as the distance stretches out. In World War III, weapons using the same ammo will do the same damage at all ranges. The bullets will only be different in their velocity, which in this case is just the speed of the bullet. So between two weapons that use the same ammo, if one has a higher rate of fire, it will kill enemies faster. You can know this even without actually knowing the damage profile of the bullet. The MSBSK fires 5.56 rounds at 720 rounds per minute. This is actually the second slowest rate of fire in the game among 5.56 assault rifles, which would be bad if not for the fact that there are only four 5.56 ARs in the game, and the two that shoot faster only shoot very slightly faster. I'm talking less than a 5% difference. To be fair, that's not the only strengths the M4 and G36 have, they also have better handling stats and take up one less block of weight. But the problem with them is that they both have lots of horizontal recoil, which really limits your ability to use them at range if your aim isn't absolutely perfect. The MSBSK shoots only slightly slower, but it is much more accurate. On the other end of the spectrum, the M416 is even more accurate, but it also shoots even slower, and this time the difference is much bigger. 680 RPM is slow for 5.56. To put this into perspective, the AK-15, which is the fastest shooting 7.62x39 assault rifle, sits at 620 RPM, which is bad news for M416 users because 7.62x39 does more damage per shot than 5.56. The M416 is also 6 blocks of weight, whereas the MSBSK is only 5 blocks, which is precisely the maximum amount of weight you can run alongside the titanium helmet and steel armor plate while still maintaining medium mobility. Running an M416 will push you into low mobility, which will decrease your movement speed and tactical sprint duration if you don't remove some armor. And that is where the MSBSK stands. I'm not actually arguing that it is the best assault rifle, but hopefully you see why it's a great one. When it comes to attachments for this weapon, the blueprint from the assault loadout is actually not bad at all. However, there are a couple of very good attachments missing from it. The first one is the 30 round puller magazine, which unlocks quiet early, and putting it on will just speed up reloading with no trade off. So unless you need the attachment slot for something else, there's no reason not to use it. The next one, and the most powerful one, is the AN slash PEQ 15 or Ampec 15 laser, which speeds up aiming down sights by a huge 20%, at the cost of only some weapon swap time. If you're wondering, this laser also does not project a beam that the enemy can see, unlike some of the others. In fact, for the time being it actually retains its effect even when you turn the beam off. It's a no-brainer on most weapons that have it, including this one, so once you get it, make sure to use it. 
For the muzzle device, the blueprint comes with an M416 muzzle brake, which is a very high level unlock that's quite nice to have so early, but there might still be better options for the muzzle. Once you unlock the combo and carbon suppressors from the backpack, you can actually run those, which reduce recoil slightly less, but doesn't affect ADS time. They also won't take up an attachment slot because they're from the backpack. The backpack also provides some really good alternatives for optics. The default 2x hollow sight is pretty good, but the SPD reflex and T12M offset are amazing on top of saving you another attachment slot. Moving on, let's talk about the Vityaz, which is an SMG. Now to say that the Vityaz is a good SMG doesn't actually mean all that much, because there are only two SMGs in the game right now, and the other one, the SIG, is also not bad. In fact, at first glance it's actually easier to believe that the SIG is way better, because it has the exact same rate of fire as the Vityaz at 770 RPM, but uses its own exclusive ammo, which is noticeably more powerful than the 9mm rounds used by the Vityaz. Again, even though nobody except the devs themselves know exactly what the up-to-date damage profiles are, the difference is quite noticeable from simply using the guns. It's also a fair advantage for the SIG given its poor accuracy due to high horizontal recoil, which is also where the Vityaz comes in. You see, the thing with SMGs in this game is that even though they are short-ranged weapons, they are often used in loadouts where you don't have a longer-ranged weapon to switch to, such as when you're running them alongside an RPG or just a Glock because you're going for a high-mobility build. I think the SIG is still great when used as a secondary to a sniper rifle or marksman rifle, but the Vityaz is a better choice for the types of loadouts where you benefit from being able to take some of the longer range fights with your SMG. For attachments on the Vityaz, a lot of what I brought up earlier also applies here. The 30 round puller magazine is pure benefit if you have a slot to spare. For optic and muzzle, you can run your attachment of choice, but once you unlock the good optics and muzzle devices from the backpack, those are very good on top of saving you an attachment slot each. The Anpec 15 laser is available on the Vityaz, but this is one of the very few weapons where you might want to think twice about using it. For starters, SMGs already aim down sights very quickly, and then there's the 20% weapon swap time which, if you're running the SMG alongside an RPG, it's already pretty tedious to switch back and forth between your two weapons, so it might not be worth it here. You might be better off running a hipfire laser or no laser at all and save the slot for something else. Lastly, if you are using one of those loadouts where you benefit from having more range on your Vityaz, you can consider the Marksman Barrel. But keep in mind that 1. It decreases your close range damage, and 2. It decreases your ADS time as well as your weapon swap time. You can of course counter the ADS time penalty with an Ampeg 15 laser, but that would add even more weapon swap time. So if this is your RPG loadout, you'll have to decide what's more important to you. Last but definitely not least, the UKM light machine gun is probably the most powerful out of the three. Now it is much harder to use than the MSBSK or Vityaz, and even more so in its stock condition thanks to noticeably higher recoil and exceptionally long ADS time. Although those traits are not unique to the UKM, it's something that every stock LMG suffers from, and once you've unlocked the right attachments, you can build those weaknesses out of the gun to some extent. And once you do, you will end up with a weapon with reasonably slower ADS and higher recoil than the average primary weapon, but in exchange, delivers 762 by 51 rounds at 660 RPM. Remember when I said that the AK-15 fires 7.62x39 rounds at 620 RPM? That's one of the most powerful ARs in the game, and it fires a weaker round at a slower rate, which means that if you can tame the slow ADS and high recoil, the UKM will outgun just about anything, not to mention that you have a 100 round mag. I said at the beginning that you could argue that any one of the three guns covered in this video is the best weapon in their class, but this might be one of the best guns in the game. I'm not even exaggerating when I say that the UKM outguns just about anything. If you think about it, the Marksman rifles use the same ammo but shoot much slower, the M417 does what, 400 RPM, and other weapons use weaker ammo without shooting much faster, if they shoot faster at all. 
you really do outclass just about everything in terms of damage per second. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you will always outclass other weapons in terms of actual time to kill, because that depends on exactly how the numbers work out in that gunfight, especially if armor gets involved. But assuming that you and your enemy both start shooting at the same time, the odds are way in your favor if you are the one holding the UKM. There is one weapon that's technically more powerful. The MG5 delivers the same 7.62x51 rounds at a crazy 800 RPM. It's actually the fastest shooting gun in the game that also uses the most powerful ammo type in the game, which is kind of crazy to think about, but I still don't think it's that great. For starters, recognize that with a UKM, you can already outgun everything that isn't an MG5. And then if you look at the MG5, it has an even slower base ADS time, and it's also missing one of the attachments that the UKM has for reducing ADS time. The MG5 still has the Ampeg 15 laser and compact barrel, so you don't have to wait until tomorrow to aim down sights, but you can't build that weakness out of the MG5 as much as you can on the UKM. The MG5 is also 8 blocks of weight, whereas the UKM is only 7. Once again, it's only a 1 block difference, but it happens at a key point. 7 blocks is the most amount of weight you can fit into a loadout alongside full armor. With the MG5, you will at least need to sacrifice the titanium helmet to have the most powerful full auto weapon in the game. Alternatively, you can run the second most powerful full auto weapon in the game concurrently with the most powerful armor setup. Hopefully you see the point I'm trying to make here. When it comes to the attachments for the UKM, the Ampeg 15 is of course a no-brainer. It reduces ADS time, which is desperately needed on any LMG. The moment you unlock this attachment is actually also when grinding out the rest of the gun becomes noticeably easier. You can even put on the compact barrel to reduce ADS time even more. There's no need to worry about the downsides. The recoil penalty is only 5% and I doubt that it'll even be noticeable to most people. And as for the decrease in long range damage, 7.62x51 at 660 RPM will probably continue to outgun most weapons even with the damage slightly reduced. Just maybe not by as much, and provided that you can land the shots of course, but even if you can't, given that this is an LMG after all, ADS time will probably still be a more pressing concern. Thankfully, the UKM has even more attachments to reduce ADS time. You may recall me saying earlier that the MG5 is missing one of the attachments that the UKM has for reducing ADS time, and this magazine attachment is what I'm talking about. This is unique to the UKM. The other two belt-fed machine guns, the MG5 and the Peshinang, do not have it. The UKM is already, in my opinion, in a way better spot when it comes to a balance of firepower, accuracy, handling, and weight compared to those two, and this attachment gives it an even greater edge. Now, the UKM only has four attachment slots, so if you put on all three of the attachments I just mentioned, you will only have one more left. I like to spend this last slot on the UKM angled grip for the best horizontal recoil like I do on most weapons, although the UKM angled grip being used on the UKM seems appropriate. It does take a while to unlock, so until you do, the classic vertical grip will also suffice. This leaves you with no attachment slots for optics or a muzzle device. But once again, the backpack comes to the rescue, so slap on the SPD Reflex or the T12M offset, plus either one of the backpack suppressors, and you have an LMG with six attachments, all of them representing the best use of their slot. And that's pretty much all I have to say about the MSBSK, Vityaz, and UKM. I hope you learned something useful about the game, and if you haven't already, go try out these three weapons. They really can be a lot more than just stepping stones to reach higher level unlocks, despite how early you can get them. And I think the devs made a great choice to make these three weapons the primary in the first three default loadouts. You want to give new players gear that's well-rounded and hard to use wrong, which is exactly what they've done here. If you would like to see more World War 3 content like this, you can check out my World War 3 video playlist. Let me know in the comments about your thoughts on these weapons if you have any, or if you have any feedback for the video that I need to hear. Thanks for watching, have a great day.